Uh, so at the moment, as you know, we have this architecture where main awaits for the printer to be done. And whenever the URL generator is stopped and the stats watcher is stopped, at some point, done will notify uh, the main uh, the main fiber by, by closing. And at that point, the application terminates. And again, we have a bit of a problem because stats writer, uh, we don't know when stats writer is actually done. So what we'll do now is we'll add another uh, done channel for stats writer itself so that whenever um, whenever URL generator and stats watcher uh, terminate, we also have main awaiting for uh, the termination coming from stats writer. And only once both the printer and the stats writer are done, uh, the main uh, the main fiber will go to will uh, will terminate. Okay, so let's go and do that. The first thing I'll do to make sure we don't get confused um, is I'll just rename the done channel to uh, printer done so that we know that uh, we're talking about the printer. And the other thing we talked about is the fact that from our uh, diagram here, stats writer is the one we need to wait for because it's the most downstream uh, task running um, um, that receives uh, that consumes data uh, produced by the URL uh, generator and the downstream channels. So what we'll do is we'll go to the stats writer and we'll change the implementation of stats writer to for it to return a done channel, and we'll call it writer done. Let me go to the implementation of stats writer. If you need a refresher, stats writer is a is a task that uh, receives on the URL status stream and then uh, depending on the state of success or failure um, of, of, the, of the status, it will uh, up, update some uh, um, uh, log success or log failure, depending on the status code uh, and the failure or potential failure of the request. So what we'll do is we'll wrap uh, the spawn into a channel uh, nil, which is going to be the one we use to signal that the that the fiber is done, and we'll do so channel nil new, and then we'll tap on the channel, and we'll call this channel done. This is a pattern that we've seen before, and as usual, we end up indenting everything else. So this goes in, and we wrap. The spawn in the channel and then what we want to do is whenever and i'm gonna make things a bit more consistent with what we have in other areas of our code which is uh, rather than rescuing and breaking inside the loop i'm going to be rescuing one level uh, above which is at the level of the spawn and there's, there's no actual difference in this particular case because the code is so simple uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, to see that the two solutions are actually equivalent but this just allows allows me to just also do ensure that um, we are closing the done channel and this is an approach that we're also using in the printer so if I go to printer you can see there's a similar uh, there's a similar um, pattern here where whenever we break the loop because of a because of an exception we log the fact that the input stream was closed and then we close the done, uh, the done channel. I'm just gonna log exactly the same because we know our logger is good enough to keep track of what's going on, which fiber is, uh, is uh, publishing, and then we close the channel. So if I go back to URL checker, now stats writer is returning a done channel and what we want to do is when we, before terminating, we want to wait for both the writer and the printer channel just like this I'm gonna run this now and I'm also gonna show you the uh, the logs from the terminal uh, you can see how we started generating URLs I'm gonna control C oh we still see an exception uh, I can tell you about this one in a second but it's good we can investigate why we're seeing this stack trace but if I go back to the uh, to the logs, you can see at some point uh, main is shutting down, which is when we receive the control C signal. Um, then uh, con concurrency still is shutting down, uh, which is the generator, which is the URL generator. Then the stats watcher 
uh, goes and shuts down which is what happens at the top level so the first two axes you see here the URL generator and then stats watcher both uh, close the downstream channel and at that point that triggers a sequence of uh, channel closure downstreams right and then we have printer that closed so printer closes so input stream was closed and then you can see workers uh, also terminate and it's at this level that that it happens at the level of the status checker and that that termination is also propagated to the stats writer so one level uh, below and finally we notify the done channel and that's when the main actually publishes goodbye which means we are in a much much better uh, place than we were before now we're seeing we are still seeing a weird stack trace so it would be interesting to understand why that is i can actually go and uh, chase and, and look at where uh, the uh, the exception happened and you can see that the exception happens inside this enumerable um, um, double arrow uh, method this is very convenient because if you look at my slides um, the third point in the um, in the cleanup session is actually about inlining the enumerable um, uh, arrow arrow channel uh, method because it's uh, just behaving slightly different than we expect we're just gonna be taking care of it straight away so the only place where this method is used if I just look for the um, greater than greater than sign uh, across the stack uh, the only place where we're using this is in the concurrency util file itself there we go and the reason why we're seeing this exception is uh, slightly subtle so whenever so this is the definition of the every every method the every method is one that will uh, call a particular block every given amount of time so whenever the the period expires uh, a block call is invoked and then we push the results of the block call into the outstream the problem with this is that the way the greater than greater than um, sign is implemented is uh, to spawn another fiber that will take care of pushing each value into the into the channel so what happens when we what can happen sometimes depending on uh, depending on how uh, things go there's a bit of a race condition here whenever we terminate the uh, we, we signal termination through the interrupt channel what happens is that it might have been that in a previous loop the timer expired the block was called we spawn a new uh, a new fiber then is going to push all the values into the the outstream meanwhile there's a new loop uh, the interrupt is received we break we close the outstream and when we do that the uh, the fiber we spawn just for the sake of pushing each element uh, is still pushing elements and this is what is producing is uh, causing this uh, stack trace down here so what we'll do because we are when we define this method we were actually working on something slightly different so we actually don't need it anymore and we can we can do with a bit less complexity so rather than uh, having another spawn fiber we'll just uh, push the elements from the same fiber that uh, got the timer expiration expiration and what we'll do is so the each was called on block dot call, so we can do block call each, and then for each one do outstream send value. So it looks like the implementation is very similar, but actually there's a subtle difference, which is we're not spawning a fiber just for the sake of pushing the values anymore. Uh, I'm gonna not that it's gonna prove anything. This is a bit of a this is an exception that only you can only see uh, intermittently but I'm going to run it again uh, control C and show you that we're definitely not going to see this exception and you'll have to believe me that we've done the right thing so I'm going to control C and showing you the terminal you can see uh, stats writer was also closed we get goodbye we don't see any stack trace and we are uh, good to go